Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and today's video is going to be an advanced tutorial on WordPress development because in today's video I'm going to be explaining to you what exactly hooks, actions and filters are. Now it is very, very important and essential as a WordPress developer to know what exactly these are because you cannot write custom WordPress functions or develop your own plugins or themes without understanding what these three things are. So in today's video, I'm going to do my very best to explain to you what they are and how they're applicable to WordPress development. So let's first of all start off with hooks, all right? Imagine a WordPress installation, all right? A fresh WordPress installation. There is no custom theme being made. There are no plugins that have been installed. We're just talking about the purest WordPress installation, fresh installation, right? We already have code that makes up WordPress. Code that will tell WordPress that, hey, when we publish a post, publish that post on the blog page. When we create a page, that page should be displayed here. It should use this template and so on. If we're adding a logo, it should be displayed at the top and so on and so forth. WordPress by default already has its thousands and thousands of lines of code that tell it how to operate, all right? Now, think of plugins as more like an extension of the core functionalities of WordPress. WordPress by default won't give you the ability to create a custom contact form, right? So you might need a plugin to do that. So that plugin in essence is basically an extension where we're extending the functionality of WordPress, right? However, think about it. You as a plugin developer, you want to build a plugin that would allow WordPress users to build their own custom WordPress forms, right? You need to be able to attach your own code, the code that you've written to develop your plugin. You need to be able to attach that code safely to the custom code that comes with WordPress by default. You just can't go in there and throw in your own code and say, hey, WordPress, here's my own code, take it. Now produce this contact form. That's not gonna happen. Your code as a plugin developer needs to be able to interact safely with the pre-existing code that makes up WordPress by default, right? This is the reason why sometimes we have what we call conflicts where you install a plugin and it crashes your WordPress website because the code that came with that plugin, it's not compatible with the version of WordPress that's currently been installed on that website. Okay. So you've written your code. You want to come in and insert your code safely to the pre-existing code of WordPress. There are certain points where you can add your code. Those points are what we call hooks. Hooks are essentially places within the custom WordPress code base where you can add your own code for your plugin, where you can add your code to extend the functionality of WordPress. That's why they're called hooks. You're hooking your own code to that part of WordPress. You're hooking your code there. Okay, do this. You're hooking your code there. Okay, do that, right? That's what we call hooks. Now, actions and filters are two types of hooks. So when you're talking of a hook, you're talking either of an action or a filter. So what exactly is the difference between an action and a filter? Actions are very, very direct. They tell WordPress something very specific to do. And it tells WordPress where to perform that function, right? A filter on the other hand also tells WordPress what to do. The difference though is that a filter will first of all ask WordPress to give it something, to give it something and then the filter will edit that thing. It's going to modify that thing and then give WordPress back and say, here, I've done what I needed to do with this resource you've given me, now execute, now display it. Let me give you some actual uh, piece, pieces of code in here, okay? 
I do have my Canva presentation in here, which I'm going to expand, present to you, okay? So what we're seeing right here is an action. You can see right there, it says action hook to add custom code to the WP head section of the website. Now, on your WordPress pages, a typical page, in fact, in, in web de development in general, a typical page is divided into three main parts. You have the head section where things like your uh, logo might be displayed, your main menu, and maybe it's like some meta information about the page will be displayed in the head section typically, right? And then you have the body section, which will contain the actual contents of the page. And then you'll have the footer section down there below, right? So what we're saying right here is that we want to do some stuff. We want to perform some function at the head section of our page. That's why we're saying add action WP head. Basically, whenever you're adding an action, two variables will come into play. The first variable is, okay, where on this page or where in the WordPress lifecycle do you want to perform this function, this action? And then which function, what exactly do you want to perform on in that area? Here right now, we're saying add action WP head. So we're saying, hey, we want to perform a function at the head section of the website. And that function is my custom function. So again, two variables. The first one would be where are you performing this function? Oh, in the head section. Okay. So now what is the function that you want to perform? My custom function. Now we have to define what exactly my custom function is. What exactly is this function going to do in the head section? So now it's saying custom function to be executed function. My, my custom function echo meta name description content. Welcome to my website. So basically here we are saying at the head section of the website, display this message. Welcome to my website, right? Very, very straightforward. Okay. Now let's take a look at a filter. Just like with adding actions, filters also will have two variables. The first variable will be what is the filter that you want to work with? And then what exactly is the function that you want to apply to that filter? In this case right now, the filter is the accept length, the accept length of your typical WordPress blog post. And the function in here is the custom accept length. So what we want to do right here is we want to create a custom function to modify the accept length. You see the difference right now? We actions, we're not really modifying anything. We're just saying, Hey, do this, get this done. Thank you. Arigato. With filters, we're saying, Hey, we want to modify this. We want to make some adjustments to it. Right? So here we're saying function custom accept length. We're saying, give us the default length of the accept of a custom, uh, WordPress blog post. The length that you see in here with the dollar sign, that's the variable. WordPress knows that this length represents the default length of the WordPress blog post, the excerpt, right? So now we're saying return 20. So basically it's going to set the accept length to 20 words. That's exactly what we're doing right here. So we know that WordPress will display the excerpt of the, the blog post, but we don't want to display the default 55 words. We want to modify that. That's why we're using a filter here. So with the filter, we're going to say, Hey, WordPress, before you display your typical 55 words for the excerpt, give us that excerpt length and we're going to modify it. And in this case right now, we want to bring it out to 20. So display 20 instead. This is the core difference between an action hook and a filter hook with an action hook. We're not returning anything. We're not asking WordPress for anything. We're just saying, Hey, do this for us. Okay. Perform this function. And that's it with the filter. We're saying, Hey, first of all, give us this filter so we can modify it, make some changes, and then we're going to give it back to you. And then the result we give you, that is the result that you should display on the website. Do you get it now? So before I run this up, I actually want to give you an analogy. Hopefully this will actually make it 100% clear for you right now. Okay. Let's talk about, maybe you want to prepare chicken soup. Okay. I hope you like chicken soup. I love chicken soup. <laughs> All right. 
how would hooks actions filters be used in chicken soup when it comes to you preparing chicken soup right there are different steps involved right you have like chop the chicken you know add the chicken broth you can add some water add some carrots onions things like that right maybe add some potatoes all the steps involved in preparing your chicken soup that would be hooks because remember that hooks basically you have actions and filters so all those steps involved those are the hooks right there are certain points in the production of your chicken soup that you have to do certain things maybe you at the very beginning you may need to like preheat the water first of all and then you might have to like add the chicken broth first and then after you've added the chicken broth first you may add some carrots or you know there's like a specific detailed uh step that you have to take if you take step seven instead of step five it might destroy the recipe it might destroy the taste right so you have to follow like you know it's step by step and follow it in the right manner those are basically hooks now the actions would be the ones like you know add water to your uh to your pot add the chicken chop the vegetables chop your carrots add the potatoes things like that those are basically actions right straightforward the filters would be if you want to spice up the chicken soup. Maybe you want to add things like garlic or maybe some black pepper. Or and I know this doesn't make any sense, but you could want you might want to take the chicken and actually marinate the chicken or add some spices to the chicken before you eventually boil it. I know boiling spice things doesn't make sense. You'd rather grill or barbecue it. I know, I know, but just bear with me, okay? But the point here is that the filters are more like seasoning right you're trying to alter the default taste of the chicken soup you're adding like herbs you can add like some red pepper some black pepper some salt basically anything to enhance the taste of the chicken soup that would be a filter so going back to wordpress again wordpress development your actions to get things done do this add this code change this thank you that's it filters First of all, give me this value, give me this resource, first of all. I'm going to modify it, I'm going to change the way it works, and then I'm going to give it back to you. And then the result I give you, WordPress, display that result. So, that's basically hooks, actions, and filters. I hope I've been able to like break this down for you, and now you have a much better understanding. And uh, if you have any questions about you know, hooks, actions, filters, of course, be sure to let me know. And of course, I will answer all your questions. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. And of course, share this video with anyone whom you feel might benefit from it. And of course, if you're new here to the channel, I make tutorials on WordPress, web development. So if you enjoy this kind of videos, please do subscribe and hit the bell so they're notified whenever I upload a new video. And of course, if you want more tutorials like this, uh, be sure to let me know. Thank you so much. And of course, I will see you next time. Cheers.